A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 203rd episode of the Together for Education webinars presented by Notebook. As we completed our 200th episode with enormous love and support from you all, we took some pause to sit, think, and prepare ourselves even better for the much awaited season two of this very prestigious webinar series. It was a warm summer evening back in 2020 when we here at Notebook decided to launch a platform for the educators to connect meaningfully on discussing problems they were facing with the rising need of digital education and online learning and around with common solutions. Little did we know that day about this platform growing magnificently big, both vertically and horizontally. We thank you all once again for supporting us and we look forward to your gracious presence in all our upcoming episodes. We have discussed extremely vibrant topics here, like digital learning, NEP and assessment, extracurricular topics like sports and theater, topics like school finance and management, and even evolved topics like mental health. Today we have quite a unique topic, the Gandhi way or the Bose way. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, the father of our nation, and Nataji Subhash Chandra Bose, have both set their individual mark in the pages of history with their patriotism and irreplaceable role in the freedom movement of our country. We are still at awe and absolutely overwhelmed with the honesty, strength, courage, and impeccable leadership qualities of the two illustrious leaders who chose different paths for a common goal. How do we teach our little ones the qualities and takeaways from the two paths and strike a balance to reach their goal? Let's hear from the experts today. Our first speaker on this topic is Mr. Philip Barrett. Mr. Barrett retired as a deputy headmaster from the illustrious Doon School in Daradun after 44 years of serving in education across various institutions. Mr. Barrett served the Doon School as housemaster, head of department, dean of activities, dean of student welfare, deputy headmaster, second master, and acting headmaster. With great distinction, he also carried out a visioning exercise for the Doon School in the year 2011 through an in-depth study of a number of British public schools and various schools in the US. Mr. Barrett qualified as a leadership trainer at Farrington College, UK, in the year 2000. He's also an athlete, an adventurer, and a naturalist. And we here at Notebook are truly privileged to have Mr. Barrett as our senior advisor. So, thank you so much for being here today. A very good evening. And over to you, please. Thank you very much, uh, Gagori. Can you hear me? Absolutely, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, wonderful topic that you all have picked. Um, I want to start with a book I once read when I was a teacher. And uh, this is called William Golding's uh, Lord of the Flies. Uh, it's a book about students. And there's a group of boys flying uh, to perform uh, a drama in another school. And the plane crashes. And this group of boys, uh, they all survive. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a jungle type of island, full of wild animals. And very soon, uh, the boys just want to survive. They want to get off the island and they want to survive. And the story goes on uh, to tell you that the boys divide into two groups, one under the, under the leadership of a boy called Ralph and the other under the leadership of a boy called Jack. Now, Ralph was into getting off the island. So his concern was getting together, getting food, uh, lighting a fire so that they would attract a passing ship. There were no adults on the island. They're only the boys. The other boy, Ralph, was into aggression. He was into hunting, killing, and he became very violent. They got spears and axes and they got knives and they developed all these things. And they went hunting and became bloodthirsty. And these two rival groups, then they started fighting each other. And of course, the story ends when a passing ship sees this fire and comes. And with the adult presence of the naval captain, uh, the boys are, they, they get into harmony and they are, and they are, um, uh, they are rescued. Uh, the author of the book, William Golding, was a naval officer in the Second World War. He also was a school teacher in the north of England. So he understood boy psychology. Now, why am I telling you the story? There are two different approaches. One was the approach by Jack. Survival, food, the democracy, uh, getting the boys into shelter. The other was Ralph into hunting, killing, violence. Uh, I'm not saying that, I'm not trying to draw a parallel between Gandhi and uh, Bose here, but if you look at India's independence, Gandhi and Bose both had similar, they, they had a similar end to get the British out, out of India. And uh, they were both friends. 
they were both uh, in the Indian Congress Party. They were both um, they both wanted India to be free. Um, they were in mutual respect for each other. In fact, Gandhi called Bose the patriot of patriots, and uh, Bose called Gandhi the father of the nation. And there were so many similarities between these two men um, that it's not funny. Uh, but there were also huge differences that um, arose. Um, as you know, Gandhi was much more for rural industry. Bose was for larger, large-scale industry. Gandhi was much more for Ahimsa and Satyagraha. Bose wanted to join the Axis forces. He was much more for violence because he believed that um, this was not enough to get the British out. And so he wanted to join forces uh, with the Axis forces. Uh, Gandhi was um, a, a very staunch Hindu. Bose was far more secular and believed that religion was a very personal issue. Um, uh, Bose felt that women should fight in the army. The Gandhis had different views of women. Um, he thought they, they should be at home. Um, so both patriots, both rooted in similar uh, in a similar cause, a common cause, um, but very different. And history is full of these differences. You have in Jung and Freud, the two world's greatest psychiatrists, I mean, psychoanalysts, were friends who fell out due to ideology. Um, there was also General Patton and General uh, Bradley, two great generals of the American Second World War, who actually led to the Battle of the Bulge and the defeat of Germany. Very different, very different. Hit, Patton was aggressive and um, you know, go-getting, and Bradley was calm, collected, and thoughtful. Um, what the, the learning for, uh, you know, the, the learning that I have as a teacher from these two very different people is that you can have different ideologies, but if your task is the same, if your means is the same, you could get together. And I think in a school, a good headmaster, a good principal, a good leader can actually get the best out of the two different types of, uh, of teachers. You have teachers who are aggressive, who want to do things fast, who want to bring, do things their way, who want to win, lose situation. These are the assertors of the world. And there are, they are needed in times uh, of trouble, you need these people. At the same time, you need the Gandhian people. You need people who are calmer, more collected, thoughtful, are willing to wait, are patient. And a good head will not use one against the other, but he'll use both the qualities of both very judiciously. I personally, as a housemaster, initially, when I was a young man, I ran my house like an army regiment, very much top downwards. I called the shots. My word was law. I didn't listen to many people. I didn't take advice. Uh, I blundered. I made many mistakes. In many ways, I was like Bose. Um, I was like that. Till many years later, I re realized that that's, this is not yielding the results I wanted. Um, I became more patient. I listened more. I took advice. I slept over a problem. I let the sun go down on our issues. I took it up and I was much calmer. I did not react. I was much more responsive. I responded. And I think in, in the school, the Gandhian and the Bosian uh, attitudes have to be, have to be a man you know, by a good head to get the best out of both. Both type of people want the same thing. They want the best for the school and the children. It is the means that are different. The people who follow both say the means justifies the end. But in Gandhi, I don't think he believed that. I think the, the means is very important to the end. Um, we cannot be also, I think sometimes we cannot only be passive and let children have their own way and be patient. I think also one of the weaknesses of Gandhi is that we sometimes as Indians are too tolerant. We tolerate too much. We tolerate injustice. We tolerate hardship. We tolerate are laws which, which are not fair sometimes. And too much tolerance leads to intolerant people running the country. And the only, my only personal um, angst against the Gandhian way is 
I think sometimes we have to be aggressive. Sometimes we have to fight for what we want. We have to confront children. We can't let just love and empathy and compassion rule us. So I think I want to end by saying that you have both types. Both have their ways. And a good leader is somebody who can bring about the best um, in, in a school, in a team. Um, to never express aggression at the right time for the right cause uh, in the right amount is as much, is as bad as, uh, as bullying. Uh, I think both are wrong. Um, if you look at the leadership uh, archetypes of Carl Gustav Jung, there are, there's the archetype of the king, warrior, magician, and lover. The king is the logical, rational peacemaker, like the principle of a school should be. The warrior is like both. He's aggressive. He's win-lose. He must win. He gets things done. He's impatient and he's action-oriented. Gandhi is more the magician come lover. He's creative. He is not for progress. He's for new ideas. He's eccentric. He wants change. And therefore, if you amalgamate this whole union concept with what I said initially with, uh, with William Golding's Lord of the Flight, I think both are useful, both are very important, and one should complement the other. Thank you very much, Gaguri, and I look forward to the expert views of Achin and our esteemed panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your wonderful, wonderful deliberations. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker on this topic is Mr. Achin Bhattacharya, CEO and founder at Nonpo. A chartered accountant by training, Ochin was the director at Deloitte prior to starting Nonpo. He has worked in India and abroad in various senior capacities in GE, PwC, KPMG, and Deloitte. Ochin is a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Eglan and Wales, a fellow of the ICAI, a member of CP Australia and CP Ireland, and a member of CIMA UK. He's also the recipient of the prestigious Indian Achievers Award. An avid reader and a passionate traveler, Ochin has keen interests in economics, history, literature, and philosophy. He's a regular speaker at various forums and chambers of commerce, and also contributes articles to numerous publications regularly. He's also on the board of some of the most renowned corporates and contributes significantly to their brand strategies. Ochin, a very, very good evening. And over to you, please. Uh, thank you, Gaguri. I hope I'm audible. Absolutely. Good evening, everyone. I once again welcome all of you to today's session. Today we have a very interesting and relevant topic in hand. One which has been discussed across the globe for more than 75 years now. The Bose-Gandhi relationship is frequently understood as the biggest dichotomy of the Indian nationalist movement. However, today when we look at this topic, I have two key takeaways or objective from today's session. First, I would like to highlight the mutual respect in spite of difference of opinion on certain issues, which is so important for our younger generation as a quality to embody. And second, the fact that there is so much to learn from these great men, be it courage, be it supreme sacrifice, love for the nation, perseverance, self-belief, taking others along by building bridges across any kind of divide, be it religious, social, economic, clarity of thought, amazing clarity of thought. Of course, never say die attitude. And the list is endless. We could go on and on. And we would all agree that these traits are common in both these legends. Hence, they might have taken different paths, which they believe would lead to the same destination. But what was common was their supreme love for the nation above everything and everyone else. When Boas took over the Indian National Army, he constituted four regiments, three of which were named after 
Gandhi, Nehru, and Maulana Azad. This shows his profound respect for his colleagues. In 1943, when Gandhiji was in jail, Bose, on Gandhiji's birthday, gave a moving address over the Azad Hind radio, where he referred to Gandhiji as the father of the nation. And this was probably the first time that this particular term was used for Gandhi. And soon it became ubiquitous. And till today, we all refer to him as the father of nation. So this really goes on to show the tremendous amount of mutual respect. And today, if you look at Netaji's association with Indian National Congress, the fact that he was a key member and a frontline leader, but he first plunged into anti-colonial movement under Gandhi's leadership in 1921. And very soon, within 15, 16 years, he rose to be the president of Congress, both 1938 and 39. Yes, there were differences of opinion, but he remained true to the Congress ideal of freedom. And what is really interesting is the story as to first, when he came back from London, where he had gone on his father's insistence to join Indian civil service, to sit for the examination, Indian civil service examination, despite the fact that he qualified for the services, he refused to take up the opportunity, but such was Bose's zeal to join the freedom struggle that the very afternoon he arrived in India, the very afternoon he arrived in India from London, he went to meet Gandhi at Mani Bhavan. So, yes, there were some questions which were raised. He wanted to understand as to different things, be it how, for instance, how non-payment of taxes would eventually force the Britishers to leave, how we would achieve Swaraj in one year. He had disagreements, be it in terms of re-election as Congress president, be it in terms of other issues, but the fact of the matter is that one thing is very clear that in terms of thought process, both these gentlemen, both these legends, they really looked up to each other. Now today, if you look at Gandhiji's ideals on education, some of these are amazing. And if you look at the ideals of education of both these men on education, for instance, if we come to Gandhiji's ideals on education, he opposed English educational system as well as English medium instruction. He desired that education be conducted in vernacular. Of course, those were different times, different priorities, different challenges. And we need to see this in the, in, the, in the light of circumstances. He advocated for free and compulsory education for all boys and girls, aged 7 to 14. And what is most important is he distinguished between learning and education, between knowledge and wisdom between literacy and life lessons. In his opinion, it, there should be an integrated approach to full development of personality, which also included physical training, high moral principles, and intellectual and cognitive development. And one thing which you know, is really priceless is, that point of time he claimed that literacy is not an education itself. He gave a lot of emphasis on morality, which is so important to be a key component of education. And like Plato, he stated that education should be a means of acquiring knowledge and wisdom that will ultimately lead the seeker to spiritual path. So the end goal of education, according to him, was more than just a way to make a living and achieve social status. It should move more be like a way to, to achieve enlightenment, which is so important for him. And of course, the objective of making Indian villages self-sufficient, focus on vocational education, which will increase students' efficiency in performing tasks in villages and make those villages self-sufficient. Along with this, now if we look at Bose's idea on education, if you look at, if, if we, like I remember his autobiography, An Indian Pilgrim. An Indian Pilgrim, it contains ideas about an optimum education policy for free India advocated by Bose. 
and much of these ideas are very common if you read his thoughts on ideal education policy was based on his own experience in school and college not based on any theory but based on his own real life practical experiences he opposed the establishment of indian public schools along the lines of english public schools and he also believed that proper psychological approach for a cultural refreshment between the east and the west he believed that that indian students should get the best of both worlds so according to him that we should not compel english education on indian boys when they are too young but he also believed in bringing them to close intimate contact with the west when they are grown up so that they can judge for themselves what is good and what is not and they can have the best of both worlds so he believed in he believed in taking a logical thought process also a lot of emphasis on technical and scientific education he he believed in an industrial india so i remember very distinctly one particular thought process one particular quote from that book that national reconstruction will be possible only with the help of science and our scientists he desired that indian students be sent abroad for training in accordance with a clear and definite plan so that when they returned home they could immediately proceed to build up new industries and in the process a new nation which would be completely self reliant and what is very common is he also desired that women receive a well rounded education this is exactly what gandhi ji also advocated for and when you look at well rounded education not only literacy but also physical and vocational training making them self reliant so despite their vast different ideologies we can see deep respect for one another and i guess this is one quality that we would really want our youngsters or school goers to imbibe he respected the others contribution to the national liberation struggle gandhi as bertsa mentioned labeled bose as the prince of patriots in 1942 and when bose's death was announced gandhi stated that netaji's patriotism is second to none his bravery shines through all his actions bose was also well aware of gandhi ji's significance as a symbol of indian nationalism across the globe and referred to him as father of nation and also in terms of thought process ideology both men saw socialism as the way forward in india of course in slightly different ways gandhi ji opposed western form of socialism and related to a more uh like western form of socialism like massive industrialization etc he believed more on self reliance making villages self reliant socialism advocated by the likes of jayaprakash nayar so gandhi ji and bose were both religious men who despised communism but if you look at the virtues both opposed things like untouchability they advocated for women's right so these are few thoughts that i wanted to share i guess on the face of it the topic looks like as if these two great men took completely different paths with different objectives but the fact of the matter is when we take a closer look we see so much of commonality sense of purpose so these are really some few interesting and relevant uh, points that i wanted to share and really look forward to hear the views of our esteemed panel on this wonderful topic i thank all of you for giving me a patient hearing over to you gauri thank you thank you so much ashwin for this wonderful wonderful deliberation well ladies and gentlemen to discuss this topic we do have a wonderful panel lined up for you today but before we start with the panel discussion a little bit about us here at notebook we at notebook are an edtech platform to teach short videos pertaining to the school curriculum this means that every topic from every subject of the school syllabus has been converted into a series of short videos that can be used in two different pieces 
what is when you as a teacher are starting on the topic in your classroom, you can play one of these videos as a method of visually introducing the topic to your students. These videos are just six to 10 minutes in duration and take up very little of your class time while offering the right kind of material to students to generate curiosity and excitement. The second is when the student is studying at home months later, they have access to the same videos on their personal device, be it a laptop or a smartphone. They can watch the videos over and over again until they get a very clear understanding of the topic that you had taught. What I am going to do now is to play you a mashup of a notebook video so that you know what they exactly look like. Namaste, Bachchu. Notebook mein aapka swagat hai. Aaj hum ek nai part ke saath fir se hajir hai. Suppose your age is 12 years and instead of 12, we call it X years. So X is equal to 12. Now, if your mom's age is 36, then we can represent it as 3X because 3 into 12 is equal to 36. Likewise, if your dad's age is 41, we can interpret it as 3x plus 5 because 3 into 12 plus 5 is equal to 41. So the movement that causes a change in place, such as from one location to another of the organism is called locomotion. So friends, when you are munching on chips or watching the favorite show on your television, are you doing locomotion? No. You're actually moving your jaw to chew on the chips and moving your eyes to watch the show. Aunt Jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool find even the ivory needle hard to pull. The massive weight of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon Aunt Jennifer's. What does fluttering mean in this stanza? The word fluttering means moving unsteadily or shakily in this stanza. Why is uncle's wedding band heavy? Uncle's wedding band is heavy because it symbolizes the sufferings, trials and tribulations of Aunt Jennifer's marriage. It indicates that the marriage is a burden on her. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a small part of some of her videos as you just now saw. We have today connected with over 3,500 schools and have had millions of students and teachers benefit from our videos. If you head over to our website www.notebook.school, you would find all such videos at your disposal. If you want notebook in your school, please get in touch with our sales team at Vivek at the rate notebook.school. With that, it is now time to introduce the wonderful panelists that we have with us today. We have with us today Ms. Dr. Rashmi Tyagi, ma'am, Principal Director, Ashville World School, Maharashtra. Ma'am holds a PhD in chemistry from IIT Rooty is a B.A. gold medalist and holds an M.A. from Mumbai University. She taught chemistry at University of Mumbai and M.S. University, Baroda. She worked as principal in CBC schools and was trained as a CBC principal at IIM Bangalore. She has published various research papers in chemistry, environment science, rural and urban farming, innovative teaching, pedagogy, nanotechnology, biomarkers, etc. She has brought changes in various rural CBC schools and educated rural women in health and hygiene. She has given scientific talks on All India Radio and is an NABIT trained peer assessor for accreditation and selected as peer assessor by CBSC. She won the IT Principal Award 2018, the Commendable Paper Presentation Award by NCRC CPC Conference 2010, Educationist of the Year Award 2013. Science Communicator Selection Indian Science Congress 2015 and was honored by Srinagar University for her Aquaponic Animal Science Congress 2016. She has also been awarded for outstanding contribution to community in 2020 for innovation and excellence in rural education in 2020, TV Raman Education Award 2021, only to name a few. Ma'am, thank you so much for being here today and always, always a privilege to have you back. We also have with us Mrs. Rashna Bhattacharji, ma'am, Principal, Unison School, Hyderabad. She has been working as principal in her current school for more than 10 years now. Earlier, she had been working in the capacity of vice principal and principal in schools with various boards, both national and international. A double master's in science and education. One of her beliefs are that teachers make the maximum difference to the achievement levels of students at all levels. That happy teachers, Make happy classrooms and the happiness quotient of the teacher is infectious. And a criteria for retention of teachers in a school besides a host of other departments. 
Ma'am, a very good evening and welcome back to the panel. We also have with us Mr. Sanvita Tandon, Principal, Sri Shikshadan School, Kolkata. Ma'am, with her schooling from St. Mary's Convent, Allahabad. Bachelor of Education from Loreto College, Gold Medalist Certificate of Merit for outstanding contribution to BA in 2001 to Allahabad. Post-graduate in Political Science, Kanpur University Scholarship from UGC Gold Medalist. She was appointed the principal at Sri Jikshasan School in January 2016. She has won numerous awards, including exemplary performance in the field of education in 2012 from Lands Club International, Community Service Award by the CBSE in Delhi at national level in 2012, Aparadita Award for Education by Sanmarg in 2017, Best Teacher Award by Bodhi Bhavan's College and School in 2018. Under the leadership of Mr. Sandin, Sri Shishadan School has received many awards, few prestigious being the Telegraph School of the Year Award organized by the Telegraph Foundation in 2018, Best Co-Curricular Activities in Lions Gurukul Award Ceremony by Lions Gurukul in 2018. Ma'am, a very, very good evening and welcome to the panel once again. Uh, if I can ask uh, my panelists to unmute themselves and uh, switch on their videos, please. Uh, I would like to come to Rashna Bhattacharji, ma'am, first, if it's okay. Very good evening, ma'am. Very good evening to everybody. Thank you, Barbary, for inviting me over. It's always good to come back to the notebook. Our pleasure, ma'am. Our pleasure. Ma'am, I will start with a question. Uh, this is... Uh, a very, very uh, unique topic for today. And ma'am, how do we balance between the two approaches of the two incredible, incredible leaders of the both and the Sandhi? This is a very sensitive but very important topic connected to lifestyle and moral, life skills and moral values. I mean, it says Gandhian way or Bose way, but then if we compare the two things, it takes me back to the time when I used to teach life skills as per the CBSC curriculum, which had the core values or the life skills at, as given by UNICEF. And there are 12 of them. Reading all of them would take a little time. So I'm just reading out the important ones, which I felt was relevant to this session. There was something, there's something called as empathy, problem solving, communication skills, negotiation, corporate cooperation, respect for diversity. Um, I read a lot of Ramakrishna Parahamsa, like most Bengalis do. And uh, Ramakrishna Parahamsa says that uh, you have to work in such a way that you are able to balance things. One of his famous stories, which I was told when I was a child, that there is this uh, young sadhu who used to cross a the way with a serpent. And the serpent was really hurt all the time, had all kinds of bruises on his body. So the sadhu asked the serpent, uh, why are you so hurt? What is happening? So he said, each time I peep out of my hole, if the passerby is, they throw stones at me and I get hurt. So the sadhu said, then why do you do that? He was uh, either biting them or sniffing at them or things like that. He said, because they keep pelting stones at me. He said, don't do that. No, then they will not throw stones at you also. And like that, some time went off a little later, a few days later or some time later, once again, this, pass, uh, this sadhu was passing the way. And he again saw this um, serpent that he was even more hurt than before. He said, what happened? He says, you told me not to hurt anybody, not to bite anybody. So look at me now how I am. So the sadhu said, I told you not to bite, but I didn't tell you that you cannot uh, hiss at them or you cannot put your point by looking at them in such a way or uh, I don't know how to put it. In Bengali, it is said that you should, what's that called? The way you do that? So uh, don't raise your head and uh, fear them a little bit. And that story has stayed with me forever. So when there are these two ideological paths leading to the same goal, just like uh, Mr. Rachin said just now. The roads are different, but the goal is same. It is basically what you believe in. 
So when we talk to the children in the class, we say that the two extremes are not important. The process and the outcome becomes important. And how you deal with it, how you are able to manage it depends on the life skills that you develop along the way. And those were the life skills that I was reading out. If there is a problem, how do you look at the problem? There isn't only one way of solving a problem. The way we talk to people, communication skills, that is also an important aspect. Negotiation, not always the other person is right, not always are you right. So how are you going to talk to people, communicate with people to put across a point? And uh, yes, this is how it doesn't come in one day. All of us have to develop that skill. And children in particular, since they are young, if they start early and if we help them to understand these points, I'm sure they would be able to work out their way because these things are not just dependent on how we train them. It also depends on the pattern of thinking of a person, the basic personality of a person. And if I am able to understand my basic personality, which we call as self-awareness, we then are able to negotiate our path through those ways that should I adopt the Gandhian way, should I adopt the Bose way, or would I take a middle path so that neither am I hurting anybody nor am I hurting myself. I think there are some of those points which I would like to uh, put forth Thank while you, Sangeeta ma'am and Rashmi ma'am also speak over and then we can talk over later again. Surely ma'am, surely. Thank you so much for your Deliberations, ma'am. Uh, if I can come to Rashmi Tyagi, ma'am, next, ma'am. Ma'am, if you kindly unmute yourself. Good evening, everyone. And it is a wonderful discussion and the people out here. I'm getting such good vibrations today. And the, you know, topic, it is really good in the context of the school, in the context of teaching the students. Because as we know that a paradigm shift has taken place in the education. So we don't tell the students that you just read about this and then you uh, do the formulas and the definitions and all that rote learning. We have to tell them that how to solve the problem. And we have got competency-based education. We have got outcome-based education. And uh, Rachna Bhattacharji, ma'am, ha has really given the best example for today's discussion that we have to teach them both the things, when to react in the way so that uh, they can save themselves, defend themselves, and when they have to just do it in the peaceful manner. So that is very important. And here, first of all, I'm going to just uh, be emotional about our uh, childhood because we are 50s born and Gandhiji and Netaji Subhash Chandra, they were our heroes. And uh, we, all, we all of us, you know, of that generation, we worship them. So both are great and both have done the best they could do for, uh, you know, getting the freedom. And uh, I think Lord Krishna also in, uh, you know, Mahabharat told Arjun that you have to fight the righteous war. And, uh, you know, uh, whatever it is, you have to stand up and fight. So that kind of attitude we have to teach children that sometimes you have to get, get up and fight. And I can give you the example also. Suppose our students whom we are preparing for tomorrow to be in big companies, maybe a CEO of the company. And suppose they have to be, uh, you know, a big officer in army. And when they have to deal with the terrorist, then how they are going to deal? So both ways they have to uh, bring it here, Gandhian way and Subhash Chandra Bose way also. 
because in the beginning they have to negotiate as rachna ma'am said we have to teach them the communication skills that is the 21st century skills so uh, the how they are going to communicate as gandhi ji was communicating in that peaceful manner so we have to just bring them to that stage and then slowly let's understand each other because we don't want that they take that kind of action you know like uh, start uh, you know killing people like if the terrorists are there they are having guns in their hands so our students whom we are teaching today they should be able to you know tell them okay calm down let's talk and so that is the gandhinian way and once they are caught then how they have to deal with or maybe when to fire so both the things are important here both ways we have to teach our children and the hijackers also we have to talk to them in this manner and you know emotional skills of the students are also very important so we have to see that even gandhinian way the emotional skills the social skills these things we should teach our children and we have to teach them about both the great man about gandhi ji de di hame azadi bina khadak bina dhal sabar mati ke sant tu ne kar diya kamal lekin uske sath hamare neta ji subhash ne jo hamare desh ke liye kiya azad hind faus banayi wo bahut zaruri thi us waqt that was the need of the hour jisse ki hamare jo us samay log bahut zyada dar chuke the british raj se to unke andar bhi to koi na koi एनकरेजमेंट uh, डालना था कि हम साथ खड़े हैं तो मैं सोचती हूँ कि हमें इनकी कहानियां सुनानी चाहिए अपनी क्लास में इनके रोल प्लेस करने चाहिए और उसके साथ साथ कैसे उनको हम अपनी प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग में और अपने जो मैडम ने अभी स्किल्स बताई हैं सेल्फ अवेयरनेस एंड ऑल दो नो थिंग्स वी हैव टू इंटीग्रेट दैम सो दैट इज वॉट राइट नाउ आई कैन थिंक ऑफ इट thank you thank you thank you so much ma'am it's always a pleasure to have you back thank, thank you so you, much yeah. i would na- want to come to sangeeta madam uh, please if you ma'am i have two questions for you uh, one is the balancing between the two approaches and this uh, how to move out of consensus consensus and get into confrontation like how to teach the, this art to our students yeah thank you gagori and a very good evening to the panelists dr rashmi and, uh, and mrs rachna so we heard mr philip and mr achin so when mr achin was talking about three brigades if you remember there was one lady brigade also right the ladies had also joined ina and it was it was i think the jhansi brigade right based on rani lakshmi bai so that was also one of the brigade so we are talking about women empowerment also now when we are talking about uh, your first question was how to balance between the both right so i would say they are not both against each other are they not really they were both exemplary leaders and if you really want to understand them you will find both had lot of similarities as well now how do you become a leader in life you become a leader in life when you have a clear vision you have a good thought process you have the ability to influence others nowadays we call them influencers right so these are some of the common traits which they both had so they, they were fighting for the same cause they had a different approach agreed but still the vision was there so in a school situation for children that vision is very important they were both very disciplined people highly self disciplined people i remember when i was growing up and i was in class 8 my grandmother she gave me this book my experiments with truth and i was deeply influenced by it it was by gandhi ji and it spoke about morality and ethics can you be a leader a true leader if you do not have morality and ethics so we are talking about that in a school situation when we have the student council aren't we teaching just the same to our children we are we are talking about doing your own work now vocational courses have come into uh, being life skills like it has been already been discussed vocational courses are there when gandhi ji asked people to clean their own toilets in those days nobody would clean but nowadays just look around all are doing the same so there is no caste system nothing is based on education based on the nature of work 
then again i go back to women empowerment if uh, subhashan bose could have an army for the women and even gandhi ji was talking about women whether he was talking about them being at home but he also did have lot of women you know leaders political leaders in his group in the congress and they also influenced in the making of the constitution so a society can never progress if women empowerment is not there so we have to look at these leaders so is there a similarity there is a similarity now how to move away from a situation a move out of consensus uh well not always what others are saying it is there are two situations right one is are you going to get into confrontation or are you going to move away are you going to flow with the tide even if something is going wrong or are you going to think for yourself even if you are away from people it's not that you are wrong you should have the courage right you should have the ability the risk taking ability and that is what we are talking about nowadays i always find people who do very well in life are the ones who have taken more risks in life if we are so stable we always want stability and status quo to be maintained we do not go further if you study subhashan bose he did talk about you know uh collaboration with foreign uh, shores with people outside aren't we doing that today we are doing that uh, i must tell you i am from west bengal and from kolkata and netaji bhavan which is the house of sebastian bose the place from where he escaped is just half a kilometer away from my house so when i shifted to kolkata after marriage the first thing that i did was i went to that house i stood over there imagining how netaji must have escaped from here and we do take our children to those places last year i had this opportunity when i went for a short course at iim amdavad uh to go to uh, uh to visit the place where gandhi ji was so it was so beautiful to see both the places and to think about these leaders they teach us so much they teach about physical fitness we are talking about fit india aren't we we are when i think when the sports day comes we are we keep on telling children come on march come on look at your physical fitness and it's so difficult to move children nowadays so difficult to make them understand that you should not be taking the lift come on walk up walk short distances come on start playing and both the leaders were talking about it simple food is what we are saying look at your indian culture look at your indian food so if we study these two leaders we will understand that they were exemplary leaders they were called gandhi ji was called the father of the nation for some cause you know sometimes what happens on, on on i mean like sometimes we start reflecting upon the great leaders and uh, the younger generation gets very carried away by lot of negative comments which come because you see after 100 years 50 years 71 so many years you can start judging them it's very easy to judge people in life right but both these people have contributed immensely to the freedom struggle of india and they took charge of the situation at that point of time they did what was best they thought and there were people with them it is not easy to convince people try to convince 10 people to your cause and see how difficult it is do you think it's easy it's not easy so these were great orators great thinkers they had thoughts about education about economy everything they had and that is what is best about them and that is what we need to learn and i wish in all schools everywhere we would talk about the qualities instead of judging very harshly and we would understand what great people we have thank you over to you gandhi thank you thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you for the wonderful wonderful deliberations we had a wonderful session a very very explosive topic and uh, i think it was a really insightful session uh, i would want to call uh, ocean for the vote of thanks if it's okay ocean are you there yeah just give me a sec yeah so so i think really a wonderful session a uh, bye sir thank you as always for giving us a great start and i think some wonderful examples be it uh, 
William Golding, Lord of the Flies, and uh, continue to the topic. And you advocate a very balanced approach, sir. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, Rashna Bhattacharya, ma'am, I think uh, the story of the serpent uh, very relevant. It actually explains uh, the entire essence for the session. And very wonderfully, it, it advocates the balanced approach. You know, knowing where to start, but also standing up for ourselves, which is very important. Dr. Rashmi, ma'am, uh, thank you so much. Of course, ma'am, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. We at Notebook uh, really, really value this association. And I think, ma'am, uh, really wonderful, the example of Lord Krishna and uh, what he told Arjun during the battle, that standing up for your rights. You know, that, that is really important, the quality that we really need to inculcate and ensure that we pass it on to the next generation as well. While it's very important... Uh, uh, to be tolerant, very important to ensure that we respect each other, but equally important is, uh, you know, not to, equally important is to stand up for our rights. Now, not only our rights, but also to protect those whom we can, if they're not being able to stand up for themselves. I think that's that's a broader cause for humanity. We all are indebted to that. Sangeeta, ma'am, I uh, thank you. I think uh, my experiments with truth, one of my favorite books as well. And also, uh, and we spoke about woman empowerment, a topic which is very close to our heart as well. And some, some wonderful examples, be it uh, the Jhansi Brigade or be it, you know, uh, the fact that how these two great leaders, these two legends, how they looked at this particular topic and how it's so important to build a strong and modern nation. We, we couldn't agree more. So overall, great session. I thank members of the audience as well for their active participation, for coming in. And we look forward to your continued support in the sessions to come. Thank you. Take care and goodbye. Thank you very much, Rachan. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night.